But when you get down to the meat and potatoes of this thing, <laughs> all these experts were, you know, oh, uh, well, Marlon Mack is an exciting prospect, but he's just that. He's a prospect. He's not ready for the NFL. He can't do this. He can't do that. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. Yeah, he's fun to watch, and he bounces it outside, and he breaks serial runs. Serial bouncer. Kind of yeah, spread offense bouncer. with a running quarterback and, and this and that. All of a sudden, he gets drafted by the Colts, and they don't have anybody else, and now he's like, oh, my God, you got to have Marlon Mack. Look at how good this guy is. So what, which is it here, yeah. guys? Like is he it. a prospect? or like Yeah, it. is he the future... Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Because you know, just 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 a, two months ago, he wasn't ready for the NFL. He you know he might have a couple of good spots where he breaks one on a toss or something or a jet sweep or a, catches the ball out of the backfield, but he he wasn't ready. Yeah. I like that's a good. I like that because everybody wants to. You, you we we hear this year in and year out, but we we get in our rookie drafts and we just get rookie fever. Some of us are smart enough to at least contain ourselves enough to try to navigate it through the smart way. But you you get in there and you've taken Marlon Mack a little earlier than you should. And now you got a guy that's roster clogging again, you know, I well, mean, people are pretty much ready for Mack to be the third down back in this offense. Uh, he, he did catch 28 balls last year and I tried to go back and find some of him catching the ball. It was, it was pretty good. Like it's, it looks pretty handsy. He's a handsy catcher He's handsy. out there. All right. Uh, you can, you can look a cut up of the combine with him running the gauntlet and mm-hmm. some drills and, all the time it was hands. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm on the board with the versatility, but he was really never – I never ha- saw him asked to pass protect. And the Colts have Robert Turbin. Sure. Who can also catch the ball. And they and Gore and Gore can catch the ball, and they both pass protect well. Right. I could see Mac not even seeing the field too much at the beginning of the year. I could see that too. I mean, Turbin's going to bring his gun show, and he's going to stop those linebackers and those defensive ends coming around the corner. He's it, so. Well, Frank I know Gore, you love. I know you love Turbin, big Co. Frank and, Gore's not coming off the field. Turbin's coming on the field if he does come off the field. So where's right. Mac? I mean, like you said, and here's the here's the key. There is like if for especially any like late late drafters, the preseason comes around. Like you said, second and third stringers in there. God Mac, forbid he breaks one Mac, off. Mac's gonna take one, take the corner and break Slithers one. Slithers through, and then all of a sudden he's a late first I don't rounder. Think it's a matter of if. Like I mean, he's electric, and if yeah. there's if there's a lesser quality of players on the field, sure, than are supposed to be. Mac's gonna look Mac's good gonna in the preseason. Good, right. He's gonna look. We're just give warning flag. Mac's gonna tear it up in the preseason, but this the veteran, the Hall of Famer, Frank Orr is gonna bring come in there his. His eyes ain't going anywhere. He's still got the best vision in the league. I think he's he going to be so just skinny fine. and he shoots through a hole. Skin, he's not even skinny. He gets lower than any human being ever. Right. Like he just <laughs> that pad level gets so no. low. You can't. He's getting two yards. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to get his yards. I just wanted to say that I'm not a. I like Mac. I've been. A, yeah. I've, I've been a Mac supporter for a while. We've been on Mac before anybody. We, we were. Put, we took him when he didn't even have an ADP, and we would have like taken it. him higher, but we did. You know. We didn't want to get hated. We, we've learned our lesson now. And from <laughs> now on, when we really like someone, we're just going to shoot him up our board and put him where we think he should be. But yep. we kind of let him drop down a little bit into that high third round yep. when he wasn't even getting drafted. There was no ADP because these analysts and these experts were like, oh, yeah, you like Mac, but he just doesn't run up the middle and he doesn't do that. Well, he still doesn't run up the right. middle. Like, Serial bouncer. Yeah. So, <laughs> where where the Colts took him. Who and better all of than Frank Gore it's to just, learn behind? Which is this I, potential really love that, I really love that point. In Who situation. better to learn to run up the gut with that Frank Gore? Uh, good, good point. Great this, mentor. But the the situation, the running game behind Andrew Luck, the the future of the quarterback position is in Andrew Luck's hands, and everybody wants that running back behind him. We don't know if it's going to be Mac or not. Just be, excuse me. Just be careful with your asset allocation. Just be careful right. with with what what you want to give up for him and well, all that good stuff. Here's how I'm going to play it. I th- I'm ready to take him at the end of a second round. We'll we'll get more into where we we value Mac here in a sec. But I think he's going to be. I think someone's going to reach for him way sooner. And I think you just just wait it out into the the beginning of the year, and then maybe when he's not seeing the field much, then maybe you can go buy him. For some, for next year's second or next year's third, okay, because okay. He's, they're not seeing this ROI that they are expecting off the rip. True, which is what I feel like's happening. So I, I don't know. Um, well, if you don't see something to give up that next year's second, you're gonna somebody's giving up that ne- that this year's second to get him potentially even higher if they're got a late draft and he shows something in preseason and there's a ton more buzz. But I see what you're saying there. The potential week six, week seven, week eight, he's sitting there not getting much playing time. And then the buyer is like, dang it. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I will take a fourth or a, or to a third and a fourth for him next year. Right. So, I mean, know. the, the rookie ceiling here has got to be comparable to like a Tevin Coleman 
type of situation. Like that's like saying like best case scenario, everything works out for uh, Marlon Mack and you're kind of seeing him in that Coleman role where they, they throw it to him, give him some tosses, maybe he runs up the middle here and there. Worst case scenario is he doesn't do anything because Turbin's in there taking up snaps, Gore's on the field, and they know when Mack comes in, it's an outside run or some sort of gimmick play, or right. so they're containing. And just what to Mack's tie those doing. two things together, I mean, Tevin Coleman was drafted in the third round by a fairly new regime who only had a, a one year non starter, non factor Devontae Freeman ahead of him, beats him out in training camp, gets hurt, Devontae Freeman crushes in that offense and shows that that's never a, looks back. That scheme is perfect for his his vision and talents and how he likes to make his runs. So that you know, I don't I don't think Marlon Mack's gonna come in here and, and beat out Frank Gore and you've already said that right. too. So it's not even in that type that type of comparison, I was, yeah, I was just given the player kind of sure. Role well, comparison. that's what people are saying that yeah, yeah maybe Max got a little Tevin Coleman to his game because of his speed and versatility. But I think it'd be a different situation to look at. It would be uh, a great situation if Frank Gore wasn't there, but he is and he's a staple. I think Mac could be a really good player. It's just there's it's not it's not like oh this is a can't miss. This is right. like this guy's shown right. To be a pro style, a pros pro, this kind of deal. Um, there's there's a lot of upside there, but his guy's never been on the field before. He was playing at South Florida with a running quarterback. They they ran a, you know, kind of spread offense. That was college. You know? That's the way everybody that goes this way. Just 34. Frank Gore's 34. Can't forget that. That's what everybody's going to lean on after everything we just said. And it wouldn't shock anybody if Frank Gore got another 1,000 yards this year, five or six touchdowns, and Mac didn't do anything. But he's 34. So if you well, want to get Mac, I'm not going to tell you not to take Mac. I'm not going to tell you not to take Mac either, but just be careful. Just be aware. Of reaching up too high. Like you okay. said, bottom well, of the second, I'm in, I'm in. Right, right. Well, what what we can definitely feel good about what I, is that there, there's massive potential for Mac. We've all said that. We feel comfortable with you taking him. I feel comfortable anywhere at the end of the second round. But what's awesome is that he's going to have at least one year to learn how to play the running back that's position cool. from Frank Gore. Yeah, that's I've awesome. had four rookie drafts already, and he went 2-6, 2-7, 2-8, and 2-10. So that's, there's your range right there, 2-6 mm-hmm. to 2-10 in four, four, four yep. drafts. 2-6, man, that's steep. 2-6 is pretty steep. That depends pretty, on where you are. Yeah. It, okay, the, one 1-2-6 one, might be a different draft 2-10. You know sure. what I mean? Depends on if they're if you're piling those wide receivers in front of him or something. 